Hey, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to our podcast, No More Secrets. As always, I'm your niece, Katie Albrecht. And I'm your aunt, Mary Albrecht. And we are here today to talk wedding a little bit more. Just bear with us because after I think this will be aired after you're actually married, but you still are not married as of recording. Right. Yeah. So we're we still not married as of recording. There's a lot going on right now. And if you want to be part of the Katie Mary show, you need to hear about wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what's that's what's happening. So, I mean, if you haven't experienced it yourself, you get to see a little bit through the the, the process of this whole thing. And so. I've never I would never was married to Terry uh, legally. I've never put on a wedding. Um, his daughter's mother, biological mother, put on that wedding along with Terry. So I've never done it, and I th- I have no desire to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so don't don't feel like you know. I mean, you I'm did help, jealous. You did help with the marriage license, so that's true. But that was the reverend doing it, right? <laughs> not your, your other, not your, your aunt. Hat, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that and I and then actually organizing some of the formation of the. You know, we talked about that, and then we even did a little marriage counseling last Sunday. <laughs> I didn't. Ex- we did. <laughs> I didn't expect her to say yes because you know they tell you now you're a reverend and you might want to do a little like premarital I mean, counseling. We didn't do real counseling because I feel like it would be hard with you anyway. Like, I, well, I with mean, our relationship, you know? exactly. She goes, you know, I said, "Would you like to do some premarital counseling?" And she goes, "Hit me," and I'm like, "Really? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect that." <laughs> so we talked about like debt you know like how do you handle your budget conflict resolution you know fight you know different kinds of love languages blah 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 and then I'm like okay this I'm bored it was like two questions and then we we moved on yeah but I tried (laughs) right yeah I mean I I do believe in couples therapy for sure. Yeah. Did you guys ever do that? I can't. Oh yeah, you did a long time ago, we right? Did, yeah. Uh, yeah. Years ago. Just to. I mean, we were living together at that point, and we just wanted to like kind of communicate better because we were so different and mm-hmm. trying to figure each other out and stuff. And it actually uh, was a very positive thing for us. Mm-hmm. And I, I think if you go into therapy with the expectation of um, like resolving, it's with a couples therapy is good but a lot of people go into it with the expectation to um shit talk their partner interesting you know what i mean yeah so like i feel like it it works better (laughs) if you're if both parties are are just willing to like be a team attacking this with their counselor or whatever you know but otherwise it's not as opposed to trying to see who can win like yes let's see who the therapist will agree with most we'll side with or something yeah <laughs> yeah that, that doesn't work you're gonna end your relationship if and, you do that you and know? you're also wasting your money and time <laughs> <laughs> right you could just do this to each other you don't need therapy you don't need for the that person for it yeah <laughs> but i i i'm always a supporter of therapy of any kind of any dynamic you know relationships family relationships just yourself i mean actually um it's it's really important i had a long talk with one of our past guests carolyn parker from uh yfc last night and um she's actually uh moving on to a different uh organization at the end of september um, because she's specializing in a certain kind of therapy that I'm really excited about, and I and she's going to take me on as a client in October. Is it EMDR? It's not. It's it's not that. Which, but it's something as proactive okay. for trauma um, people. You know, people that have experienced trauma. It's called um, somatic experiencing, and it's been in place for 40 years. This Dr. Paul Levine, like. When the Twin Towers fell, they summoned him. And what they do is it's actually, they recreate some of the trauma so that your body reacts to it, but then you can expel it from your body rather than trying to overcome it with your mind. I don't really understand it because this was just last night, but it really, it's very proactive with getting rid of the PTSD symptoms that happen in your body, like anxiety and reactions and anger and, you know, just like confusion and stuff. Yeah. And so I think it'll be a really great topic to talk about once I get into this. So it's interesting that you say that because um, my therapist just got certified in EMDR and she <sighs> okay. said that I would be a good candidate for it. And it's kind of funny because she's like, because she's still, you know, new to it. Obviously okay. She just got certified. Um, 
she said obviously you've it's good for people with trauma but it's good for just anyone in general but you'd be a good candidate because you seem like stable or kind of you know (laughs) so i was like oh that's a good compliment you know know, uh, (laughs) carolyn said that last night that i would respond to it quicker because i've already got a good base of therapy and i'm willing you know yeah i think it's Mm -hmm. they're obviously you want these types of therapies to help unstable people too but (laughs) but she was i guess there's a concern of like disassociation or something like that sure if you have like a history of that or if you have a mental illness that causes that oh interesting are you gonna do it when you get back Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, we're all we're uh set for it um is this your own personal therapist right yeah my my personal one yeah yeah because i know you have somewhere and she's great because there's times where i definitely um need to talk about stressors in my life and stuff but then there's other times like this past week where we talked about taylor swift and harry styles the whole time (laughs) i'm like this is a dream you know (laughs) but that's just how the conversation went and if i needed to switch it back i I could switch it back but But she didn't push she didn't make you right yeah that's good that's a good therapist it's a good balance yeah can we talk about harry styles for a minute of course because (laughs) my clients are all like who is this harry styles guy because he's been in the news recently right (laughs) (laughs) and i kind of know a little bit only because of you but why about him for years now but why is he so by for once well this is a huge year for him is that why he's so yeah he's very prominent right now probably more than he's ever been which is crazy because he's been very prominent yeah he's a very popular um persona but this year i mean he he's released his third studio album he's in two movies oh he was in more movies like last year too okay um and i think the current um or he's all over TikTok. He's he's touring this year and next year. And I think what he's been in the news about is something with his upcoming movie. There's some drama with it. Okay. I'm guessing. So any drama is just more publicity. Sure. Essentially. But yeah, this is like his, I think this is his shining year, pretty much. What they said, like People Magazine or something said he's like the most sought after uh, celebrity right now um, in terms of like magazines and reporters and coverage and stuff like that. Yeah, he's pretty big. One of my clients asked me if, does he always dress that flamboyantly when he's just like out and about not performing? No. I didn't think so because I've seen I think it's a bit pictures. and that's controversial but oh is it okay I think it's a marketing uh, strategy well because I saw it sells. a couple pictures with his girlfriend and he looked just you know normally dressed you know I don't think he's like against flamboyant dressing I just don't that's not how he sits at home like on the couch right you know what I mean like, kind of like Elton John <laughs> Elton John was so flamboyant or Prince or Michael Jackson or Lady Gaga it just sells yeah it does it's what sells it's a lot of work to do that too so I kind of admire it you know yeah it's like it's it's a way to get people interested and intrigued by you because you seem different mm-hmm. and I mean there's nothing against that because obviously he does it very well and I'm still a fan but um I don't think it's anything more than just a marketing strategy. Uh, yeah. It's fun. Yeah. Um, they had a, a mother, no, a father daughter on uh, the news at ABC Good Morning America yeah. uh, this week. And um, it, for some reason, they, they just got interviewed because um, this father listened to Harry Styles' music to make sure his 14 year old daughter wasn't listening to anything too like dark or whatever and he said i actually you know i like the music i don't love it like she does well they just she decided or he decided to buy his daughter concert tickets and his daughter said we cannot go there in a polo shirt because he makes fun of people in the audience that are like dressing bland is that have you heard that or I don't think he does. I think the uh, the fans the get, fans do. Yeah. So I've it, never seen him do that. Okay, I didn't maybe get and the story I right. Watch clips of it and stuff. Well, this father, Could be wrong. like this just regular businessman father, he dressed like Elton John. Like he dressed with a big, huge, like you know, um, like lay around him, like all bright red. He had he painted his nails blue. He. You know, just, I mean, he, whatever his daughter wanted him to wear, he wore. And I thought, good for you. Honestly, <laughs> so I went to Harry Styles last year um, at his last round of the tour and stuff. And there is definitely a theme of dress there that I did not know of. Yeah, <laughs> didn't they show up here? Oh, um, yeah, you saw, <laughs> you and the, saw and Maddie, Maddie and, and uh, who and else? Kaylee. 
And it was like, what? They and you knew about the theme. But you I was unaware. The, you I was didn't totally get the aware. memo. You were wearing just regular, regular clothes. Yeah. yeah. But you didn't get made fun of. No, I didn't get made fun of. No, the next time I go to see Harry Styles, I'm going to wear a freaking Packer jersey or something. <laughs> and I think that would make me really get stand out. That's honestly. a good idea. That's a great idea. He likes the Packers, too, so I feel like he would give me a nod. Because <laughs> you'll be in front row. Choose me as his lover. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I just got married. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> It's my husband and my boyfriend, you know. <laughs> Happens all the time. <laughs> I'm sure it does, yeah. But yeah, no, he's he's really big right now. Um, and, I mean, he's always been a big name, but it's just this year has been more, I think, than ever. Got it. He's really hitting his stride. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, how are you doing, Katie, <laughs> with the stress of the wedding? I'm doing okay right now, um, but I go through phases of extreme anxiety do you really mm-hmm. yes a- anxiety that it wasn't going to turn out right or that i'm not going to do all the things i want to do that i'm going to forget something that was important okay like i had um kind of mm-hmm. especially i mean throughout this whole process i've had weird anxiety dreams that were wedding related like i um <clears throat> like it was a week before in my dream and I still haven't bought a dress. Okay. <laughs> like okay. stuff like yeah. that, you know, yeah. of just, you know, things that I've kind of done in the past of other stuff where I'm I used to last procrastinate. Minute. Yeah. I used yeah. to be last minute get more and procrastinate more. And um, it, I think it just kind of exposes all that in me where I, I just felt kind of down on myself because I was not um, doing all the things that these like that normal brides do or you know like I feel like people get so got so into it and I was like I'm, I'm not that type of person I don't know if I'm gonna like be able to make mine as good as these other people I shouldn't be comparing myself to other people but I was yeah yeah and it was those kind of things really took a toll on me especially after almost two years yeah long build-up it was a long build-up um, and you never even imagined your wedding as a kid. You weren't that kind of girl. You know, no, some people was, like already have it planned by the time they're 15 or whatever. Yeah. And they know like all the vendors to reach out to. And like, or, I didn't even know what kind of vendors we needed. I had to like start from absolute scratch, you know, to yeah. figure out what all we needed to do to put on a wedding. And wow. I was still figuring out what I liked as a person. And trying to put that into a whole event. And then there's the, I felt anxiety from the guest list and like who to invite and who do I cut. and Especially because you had to downsize because your venue closed. We had to downsize. The fr- we had our first venue. It was Matt's old work because he works in the industry. And we, it was a bigger size. So we were able to invite more people. Like probably, I think we invited 30 more people or something Mm -hmm, like that mm -hmm. 30 40 more people and then we had to cut that down because that place closed we're now going to matt's current work um again working in the industry is is helpful um but the room is so much smaller that we had to cut a lot of people and then that um really stressed me out Mm -hmm. because i don't want to and i didn't want to cut people yeah I like, there's a lot of people I like, you know. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was hard for me to feel like I was doing the right thing. Like, was I inviting enough uh, family? Was I inviting enough people from certain groups so that they each have someone to talk to? Like, it, ugh. it's such a... I can't even... Ugh. I shouldn't have put this on myself like this because it's a wedding and people will figure it out. But I'm at that point now, but I, I did not think like that when I was putting this all together. Okay. So it's it's been really joyous putting together a wedding, but it, there's been these emotions and a lot of self-doubt and self-deprecation on my end that um, I did not see coming hmm. with it. So it's it's just interesting that it really kind of it can affect people that way when it's it's essentially a party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You That's know, all it is. You you're know? gonna have food, alcohol, music. <laughs> it's a party. And people you like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people that you like and, and everything. And I was mm-hmm. I was thinking about this because I know we were gonna talk a little bit about like the 
I had my bachelorette party recently. I also had my bridal shower a few months ago, and then my work also threw me a bridal shower too, which is really nice. And I'm starting. I'm starting to see like the, um, the the treatment that you get as a bride. Yeah. And it started to, like, piece back together this, like, confidence that I, I was losing throughout this whole process of, like, self-deprecation and everything. Okay. Where people were being so nice to me and, like, so generous to me. And, like, um, I I think each event I started to feel a little bit more confident. Yeah, and special. Yeah. And worthy. And worthy. Yeah. Worthy, yeah. And just being like, you know, this is, it'll come together and all this stress that I've been feeling I maybe didn't need to put that much on myself, you know, like there's a ton of people around me that are actually willing to show up and help and um, want to make me feel special. And it's it's just so nice, I guess. Yeah. That people actually care, you know. So. Yeah. It, it, it's 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 going to be neat to just soak it up the day of that, it, you know, really the bride, you know, the groom is always good to have you know right. <laughs> <laughs> but the bride is the, is the center yeah you know so yeah and that's that's cool it's, I'm just, yeah <laughs> I'm will I'm getting ready to like embrace that again and I hope you can really soak it up and just try to really look around and be like wow this is my wedding you know yeah it, that was something I mean I never really planned the details of my wedding growing up but I was always kind of excited to have all the people that from my different groups <laughs> at in a one party. room, you know, <laughs> at a yeah. big party, yeah. yeah. Um, and so that part I'm really looking forward to. But I just I think that's important for me to to share because it was it was such a roller coaster. Well, and even now though, you say you're having anxiety, but that's more because of like wait, m- maybe forgetting something, you know, or yeah, like a little detail or something. Although I'm feeling pretty good, I'm like at the point if I forget something that it just it is what it is something I mean there's enough in place that it's going to be just fine you know yes <laughs> there is enough in place and I've done all of the big things except for I guess the marriage license which is so what I told it to someone and they're like yeah that's the biggest thing <laughs> that's the only thing that matters out of all of this you know what I mean well I mean I just did that last week but they you know they say it uh you can do it up to 60 days in advance i guess but we for me i wanted to get through that 100th episode before i could really start focusing on your wedding right and as it stands it's easy like the you know you can go in anytime now i think you're going in thursday to to pick up your license cuz like the application's done and right you just have to prove that you are who you say you are and you know you right. have, and you have to go together which i find interesting you know, I don't know why that is. Why couldn't you go separately? Or, like, mail it or whatever, Yeah, I mean, you know? like, you are, I, I don't know, but it's kind of neat that you have to, that, in that county anyway, that's DuPage County. I'm sure it's different from place to place. And I'm, but. I'm learning, yeah, a lot about this, because now I got another wedding that I'm doing in October, right. and that's in Lake County, so it's different than DuPage County. And um, I'm learning a lot about, you know, that the, the legality of it. It's really a serious thing. I mean, they, they asked you, you know parents you know maiden names and where they were born and you right. know where they live now and their ad you know their town and you know it just it's like they're really trying to verify that you are who you say you are yeah so i guess maybe they don't want fraudulent marriages like maybe people i don't it's know it's a legal document that yeah. you're signing you yeah know? so everything then becomes legally bound yeah so. Yeah, it's kind of, that was sort of daunting, filling out that application. Like, holy cow, they want to know how many... <laughs> You're not even the one getting married, I'm not even the one. I'm like, holy fuck, they want to know how many years of college you had, or if you graduated high school. Oh. And I don't know why. But, you know... Maybe just to verify your identity? Something like, like that. Like questions that maybe only you know? That or only something. you know, yeah. Or, you know, that's not really that personal. People can figure that out. But. And then, and like, what you do for a living and where you're currently residing, which that's important. I understand that. Yeah. But, but then there's a whole section in there if you've had prior marriages or prior civil unions that weren't necessarily legal. Yeah. That since you or Matt haven't, I could skip. But that was a lot of detail about prior prior marriages. So think about if you've gotten married three, four times and you got to go through all of them. <laughs> At that point, why? <laughs> exactly Just why? Just be together, you know, like. <laughs> I know. Only get married if it like, I mean, I feel like marriage, I mean, partnership, lifelong partnership is beautiful. 
but marriage is is like a it it doesn't need to be the only reason like the legal marriage doesn't have to be the only way to do like a lifelong partnership you know but look and at me and terry yeah exactly yeah 31 30 years 31 since knowing them but yeah it's more of a financial kind of decision there's or a lot of tax benefits protection it's for protection of stuff mm -hmm. pretty much and it depends where you're at you know we were in different places financially when i met him and so it was better to right. not at the time and we didn't really matter to me and then when it right. was when it would have worked financially we didn't care anymore <laughs> so yeah you know i forgot that i forgot that i wasn't married sometimes i really did i thought of him that way you yeah. know no i mean because so. you've been together for so many years yeah it just it's not for everyone it doesn't represent love it's just I mean, it does, but it's not the only representation of love. Yeah, just because you know? you're not married doesn't mean you don't have a real relationship. Because I know that's how right. my mom thought of, of me and Terry. Like, she played the part or whatever, but I think it really bothered her all the way through that that we weren't legally married. You know, for some reason. Right. And that, that generation, maybe it mattered, but... Um, it was different, because it was more religious-based and stuff like that. That's true, too, yeah. And religion is not as strong, I feel like, as it used to be at least in christianity yeah and remember it was always like um the woman was supposed to obey the man in the vows but not the other yeah. way around <laughs> you're not making me say that shit are you nope we're we're good. Good. no obey in there <laughs> there's no till death do us part it's as long as we both shall live and even after right because you know why does it have to end with death the love is there you know so right but um, oh, well, this is exciting. Are we going to be able to post? Is your whole wedding getting filmed? I don't know. I mean, aren't they're going to be? I mean, they're doing a wedding video, but I don't think but they're it will like be the whole. Yeah, it's the whole day. Yeah, and I don't think they. I don't know if they filmed the whole thing. Although I'm assuming you're probably going to want that, huh? Well, well, yeah, I want to watch myself. We'll see. <laughs> Because I want them to capture. I want that. I want it to be a wedding video. It's okay. So <laughs> I'll just put my own recording we'll on my phone and record myself. <laughs> okay, that works. But we can definitely post something for our audience here on No More Secrets after they're done editing the wedding video. Yeah, because Shane and Travis actually um, are are the ones doing it. Yeah, they're filming the the wedding. Yeah. Our producers here are filming the wedding, and so we can share that with you guys as well. Along yeah. with these couple episodes that we thought we would interject just to stay in touch, you know, not completely disappear for six weeks. <laughs> right. Oop, I just burped. <laughs> oh, welcome to my world. <laughs> I wasn't even drinking any fizz or nothing. Um, but yeah, we can share some some stuff, some clips and stuff. Um, but it's it's just coming together. I'm just like, I'm really, I'm getting really excited for it. And I think it's going to be a fun party. It's going to be really fun. And worth all of the stress that we put into it. And um, so is the vacation afterwards. Yeah, so. and the vacation <laughs> afterwards. It's so good that you're doing that. Like some people these days, they don't do a honeymoon until later. And I think, oh my God, you get done with your wedding. And, and then, then you just go back to go work. go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hell no. <laughs> like you're exhausted, and fried and just, you know. <laughs> yeah, you're on this big high and then you don't have any time to just soak it in you and just end up back at the office <laughs> every, yeah business as usual yeah yeah that's that's yeah weird. we're not we're not doing that <laughs> um the wedding that i'm doing in october they are and that makes sense because they're farmers and they have to harvest their farm at you know to, through till like the end of november and then they're going to go somewhere warm in in um, february well that makes sense plus they they don't work in an office they're farmers you know so they're at their home so when the wedding's done they just go to their home they don't go back to the office and they mm. and they harvest and they grow things and they, you know so it's like they want to be there for that that's what they share that's how they met was farming so All right actually it's jeff chapman who was on here twice mm -hmm. the, um he's the one i'm marrying with his uh fiance charlotte nice yeah and her last name is sullivan 
That's weird. Isn't that weird? <laughs> yeah, small world. <laughs> and we were at the Sullivan Ranch last Saturday having her bridal shower. You know, Terry, you know Terry's house, basically. So we call it Sullivan Ranch or Rivendell or whatever. But I never knew her name was Sullivan until I saw the invitation to the shower at my house. I'm like, you're a Sullivan? This makes perfect sense. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I'm ready to wrap it up. Yeah. No, I burped, <laughs> but I'm drinking fizzy. Which I'm proud of myself because I'm drinking LaCroix with ice cubes and lemon. Do you want to share why you're proud of yourself? Because I don't think you have yet. Well, uh, uh, somewhere along the way I had been trying to cut back on this show. Um, but I remember saying it sucked. <laughs> yes. But I think the official decision was after the last time we've recorded. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, up to you. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, it's a long story, but I... Um, I I reached my bottom with drinking too much. Um, I hurt Katie. I scared Katie. Um, I worried a lot of people. I let a lot of people down. Um, And I just woke up like, what am I doing? You know? Mm -hmm. And I know you don't want it to be only because of you, but, and it's not. Because if I wasn't ready, I, I wouldn't be cutting you know cutting back so much but you were a um a symbol of my bottom because i hurt you so badly and and scared you and um and it it really affected me and i thank you again for you know saving me and kind of like we helped each other with the book and with your father and all that and this it just it really, I don't, I don't ever want to do that again to anybody. It's certainly not to you. And I want to be clear-headed for your wedding. And I'm not going to drink at not until the rece- until the ceremony's over. Mm. And then I'm going to have fun because <laughs> I'm staying overnight. You know. Yeah, and it's not a question of like, Mm-mm. should you like stop drinking completely? You know. Yeah, that wouldn't work. It never for me. was like that. Yeah. <laughs> right, and it's. <laughs> I mean, I I didn't know you were gonna say all of that. Oh, I thought okay. <laughs> well, but no, no more I, secrets. <laughs> I appreciate you saying that, and um, it's it's. I know it's a hard thing that you've been going through and stuff, and I think you're doing a great job. And I, thank you. I yeah, it's it. When Terry died, it really went out of control you know because I just didn't want to feel anything you know right and um but I have a lot of good too and what you and I have going on and our plans for the future and your wedding and all that and I want to be here for you too as your aunt you know I want to be healthy I don't want to die on the living room floor like your dad did you know I mean (laughs) I do come from an addictive family you know (laughs) a little bit yeah yeah. I'm not quite as bad as some of them but I could be maybe and I I don't know it's not worth finding out so (laughs) well I'm glad that you are doing this for you too and that you like that it feels good and I'm proud of how far you've come with that so far and I'm loving my LaCroix with lemon yeah and sometimes that's lime. a sweet mocktail <laughs> sometimes lime and sometimes I do Pellegrino with lime and I put it in a cocktail glass and I you know do you ever put it in like a mule glass to make it seem like you're drinking like a like a, a Moscow mule have you seen those no it's the copper mugs oh okay that they usually put them in okay. well, that'd be fun yeah because then it'll look like a Moscow mule but you're just drinking a and then the at court? the at the shower I um uh, that started at 11 and I drank Pellegrino that looked like champagne, you know? Oh, yeah. So, because I didn't want to start drinking at 11 even in my worst days. <laughs> I mean, there's there's time and a place for that, for sure. Yeah, but for me, <laughs> that, ugh, I just keep, I can't stop once I get going. So it's better for me to wait until like after six o'clock and wait until I'm home before I have more than one because I don't want to be driving drunk, you know, that kind of thing. So... So that's, yeah, I feel I just, I, that was my bottom. And it just, it, I haven't, it, I don't think I'm physically addicted because it was easy. It was more of a habit a, a, and a crutch. Yeah. You know? I didn't go through withdrawals or anything. I wasn't drinking so much that it was like hard liquor in the morning, that kind of thing, you know. Right. But, uh, but yeah, it was too much for me. So, and I, yep, I want to, I want to 
see your wedding. I want to be sober. I want to be clear. I want to soak it up and enjoy it and remember it. <laughs> you know, it's going to be a party. It's going to be a party. Yep. I Although mean, so far nobody wants to dance with the reverend. <laughs> I'm sure you'll find taggers throughout the audience or something, you know. Okay. Not even go. your plus one. <laughs> Ty, I don't know if he dances even. I have to ask him. Yeah, he's my my gay buddy. It's a perfect kind of <laughs> perfect kind of buddy to have because he's big and strong and a male, you know, so you feel protected, but he's got absolutely no interest in me. Um on a you know partner level or sexual yeah. level and he's made that clear and he's known since he and he has no more secrets either he's known since he was three years old that he's gay and he told his parents when he was like 10 and they're like we know <laughs> <laughs> we're just waiting for you to say it <laughs> that's so, funny yeah maybe we'll have him on sometime He's a very engaging person, that's for sure. Very, very. He's becoming a really good friend, and he's my plus one. Because back, I remember when you set your date, and I remember thinking, there's no way Terry will be around. And I remember being really sad back then. Um, yeah, I, I think about that sometimes. And he made it a lot longer than I thought, but I thought, yeah, there's no way that he'll be at that wedding, and you know it and he yeah it, he won't be and then earlier this year yeah he, he passed so it's, that's gonna be fi- it'll be five months on the 19th of september so two days after your wedding it'll be five months since he passed so not very long ago i mean since i've been engaged um we've lost grandpa and terry yep and a lot of your animals which is like which is also very sad for me too because yeah. I, I had connections with all of them and you know? dixie especially eight days before terry that was really hard they were both sick dixie downstairs terry upstairs and it was just a really sad house and yeah. then eight days later terry died so uh, okay well that's, but there's there's that's joy life. to come right that's life i guess there's there's a lot of sadness and there's also a lot of happiness too you know it's always going to be a little bit of both well and we need to balance or i certainly need to balance it out and the, and your wedding is the start of of the good stuff because then i'm going to be in another you know reverend in another wedding then i'm going to go to arkansas and see my friend christy oh nice you're doing that yep cool. and then um i'm going to south bend indiana to see my friend perch but it's a fun time you know yeah and i'm doing it those are big trips for you yeah big trips i'm starting with indiana before i go to arkansas okay actually i'm starting with itasca <laughs> yes that's very south of 60 that's so where she's getting married a little bit of a progression yeah. <laughs> and then i'll venture more from there yeah so we'll probably, this will be it. You'll see little bits of the wedding maybe at some point, and we'll be back maybe mid-October whenever we can. Yes. And uh, we thank you for your dedication. And I'll put some stuff on Instagram for my uh, my honeymoon. How about that? Really? I'll build, show a little pan of my of what I'm doing and stuff. That would be stuff. great, yeah. She didn't want a podcast on her wedding because we could have done it remo- on her honeymoon because we could have done it remotely. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Balance, baby. I need, you know, like, you got to have the, the mixture, right? Got the computer there. Hi, Matt. No, I'm going to be, I'm going to be by a pool or by a, a beach mm-hmm. or exploring a cool island. So, yeah, there I, you go. Yep. All I'll right. put you guys on hold. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you're on hold, but not for long. Please come back. <laughs> you too, Katie. Come back. <laughs> I'll try. All right. If all goes well. Okay, well, Thanks. next time, well, I think when they see this, you'll you'll be married, but the next time you're recording, because right now we're recording and I'll you're have not another married. ring. Yeah, you have another ring, and she'll look completely different. She'll probably be like five feet tall. <laughs> I'm going to shrink. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that would be a dream for me, honestly. But or you would become three hundred pounds. <laughs> Sorry. Also, I mean that's more realistic, you know. Not three hundred. Honeymoon but, fo- food, but maybe yeah. Ten pound honeymoon thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'll definitely gain some honeymoon You'll weight. You'd be a little thicker. You'll have to go behind <laughs> your wall again. Remember? Just going back to my girthy Wisconsin roots. <laughs> You remember when you, you podcasted with all those pillows around you because you were bloated? Which is funny because I wasn't really much bigger than I am now, but I just was you just like, felt bloated. I felt gross and I didn't want to yeah. show it off and stuff. But yeah. Uh, all Anyways. right. 
Well, we can wrap it up. Thank you, everyone. Support us on Patreon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Support us on Patreon. And check out the socials. Because Follow us on, on all of the socials. YouTube, Spotify, Apple. Everything. <laughs> yep. Everything. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Right. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>